here with VM Blog at VeeamON 2022 in Las Vegas, and we're speaking with Object First, who just came out of stealth mode uh, yesterday, right? That's right. Yep. Second day. Second day is a real company. Well, great. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the company and what you guys do. Yes, absolutely. So Object First is Ratmir and Andre's latest venture. Uh, object First, to be best way to think about it is if you need object storage for Veeam, think about Object First. We offer a target object appliance that is going to specifically take advantage of some of the key features coming up in Veeam to allow users to write their Veeam backup data directly to object storage on-prem. One of the key differentiators of this is the affordability of the device paired with the security, paired with performance. A lot of times people think about on-prem object storage and they're going to be sacrificing one of those three pillars, but we've really gone out of our way to make sure that nothing is lost in this translation to on-prem object storage. And maybe you can go into a little more detail about how you guys work with, uh, with Veeam in particular. Yes, so we are part of the Veeam Technical Alliance Partner Program. Uh, we are incredibly excited to be here at Veeam On today and meet all of the Veeam customers as well as the partners here uh, to make those relationships and to kind of start spreading the good word about the device itself. And maybe we could take a look at the device and uh, get a demo? Absolutely. So I don't know if you want to take a look over there, but that is the box in the flesh. It might not look too complicated, but that's part of the allure of it is we have really tweaked and tuned the performance of this to not only deliver pretty good speeds of over a gigabyte per second on a single node, uh, but also ensuring things like the immutability is maintained as Veeam starts writing backups to the device and they cannot be tampered with through any kind of backend entry. Great. Should um, we head over to our demo? Yeah, that would be great. All right. What are we gonna take a look at? So I'm just gonna walk you through real quick the configuration of the object first appliance after you've racked it and stacked it in the environment. Great. Should be pretty fast. All right, so as you can see over here, you don't have too many options available to you, and that's intentional. Because the box is designed for simplicity, we really only wanted to put so much of a configuration burden on our end users. So we just have to put in some entry-level network information as part of the configuration of the appliance, give it a friendly host name, and then we get into the next screen, you'll actually see the, the, the few pieces of information they actually need. So a cluster management IP and a cluster S3 endpoint IP. All those do is allow one to get into the web user interface, that's the management IP, and then one to actually connect to VBR12, which is the S3 endpoint IP. I'm just gonna skip ahead just a few seconds here. So once we go through this configuration, type in the password, I'll show you in real time here. We go into configuring cluster, and that's it. We're already configured. So outside of my slow typing, the, uh, the configuration can actually take under a minute if you have all the information available and ready for you upon setup. So from there, all you have to do is go into a web browser, grab that previously mentioned management IP, we'll get through this uh, certification window, which will be gone by the time we actually release our V1, log in to the web browser, and again, apologies for my slow typing. All the TBDs will also be gone along with V1, and then you're greeted with the web user interface dashboard. Now the cool thing about the dashboard is not only does it give you information about the device itself, it gives you real-time performance information. So once you start sending not just one group of backups, but multiple backups to multiple buckets, you can see in real time exactly how fast and how performant our object-first appliance actually is for handling Veeam backups. Now, as far as further configuration goes, like I said before, the end goal was simplicity. We did not want to put any of the management burden on our end users, because we understand that one of the cool things about cloud and object storage is that it's easy to use. So really you can do two things. You can create S3 keys, which you need to secure access to the S3 endpoint. And you can also create S3 buckets. So here I create a key just for Vmon. You can see it only takes a couple of seconds, as it should. But that's going to be the secure information we need later when we get into the VBR console to add our buckets into Veeam. So now we pop over to our S3 bucket section. You'll notice there's a bucket already existing. This just comes with the appliance. You need to create your own bucket to start consuming Veeam backups. We give the bucket a friendly name and you'll also notice we have the option to enable versioning. That just means that as you start to do puts onto the S3 bucket, as you start to put objects in there, if you overwrite something, we keep the previous version around for perpetuity. I click create. We'll create a bucket here real quick. And that's it. 
That's pretty much all that you would have to do as an end user using the object first appliance to get it set up and ready to rock and Veeam. So we're gonna go ahead and pop over to VBR here real quick. And you'll, you'll, this will look familiar to anyone who's ever used Veeam before. So we're just in the ad repository view. We're gonna do uh, a type of object storage. And we're in beta build here, so that's why you see the TBD again. We're gonna do type S3 compatible, because that is the type of bucket we are providing. All uh, requests are sent over HTTPS, S3 type protocol. We give it a friendly name. And I'll just do a little bit of skipping ahead here because it's more typing, copy, pasting. But we basically are gonna pop over, grab our service point. That was the IP address we set up earlier. We're gonna pop in our credentials. So that's the S3 access key that we grabbed earlier. Just copy and paste that in there. And I'll resume here. So the last piece of, uh, of demo I'll show you here is how we add the bucket. So we're gonna accept the certificate. Again, that will be taken care of by the time we launch. We're gonna choose that bucket we just created. We can create a folder underneath if we wanted to, just another logical separator within the bucket. But here's the real, here's the real uh, cool thing about this, is we are, because we have object lock built into our device out of the box, we're able to select immutability. We make our backups immutable for 14 days in this case, but we can go up to 999 days if we wanted to. But this is really where the security of the device comes in. We're able to secure against threats of ransomware and other bad actors that might want to come in and mess with our Veeam backups. Now, that's not only true for Veeam, but if you decide to go into the device through another kind of connection over S3, using those S3 keys, you still cannot delete that backup data. And that's, that's pretty much the demo. I'm just trying to delete these here just to prove the immutability works, but I think we all know that Veeam's gonna deliver on that promise, so. Right. Not, not too much more to see, but uh, hopefully that was helpful. And where can people go if they want to find out more information about Object First? Yeah, if you want to learn more, just go to objectfirst.com. Uh, we just launched the website alongside being here at Veeamon, so lots of good new information to check out or to swing by our virtual booth if you're still at the conference and want to check us out virtually. Great. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog. Yes, thanks for having me.